gonna get ya! Ha! <laughs> Hello, my fellow Tarnished, and welcome to, uh, well, uh, one of the most underrated and fun, powerful Ash of Wars in the game that when built into, well, this build becomes one of the most enjoyable, satisfying, and utterly destroy everything you use it against experiences I've ever had in Elden Ring. I cannot overstate how good this is from a simple perspective of, yeah, this is a blast. Life Steel Fist. A crouch down, a wind up, a lunge forward, and then a grab. A grab that locks you and your opponent in a macabre embrace, leaving the enemy returned to dust. It, on the surface, works very similar to Inescapable Frenzy, or even Sacred Flame of Dark Souls 3. A lock-on, slow wind-up, hard to hit, but if you do, you basically win, and yeah, it is in that camp of abilities. But, since Inescapable Frenzy got fixed, so it no longer just chained does your crit damage, well, now Lifesteal Fist is that glorious I win button. And I cannot tell you how satisfying it is, especially in PvP, knowing that all you have to achieve is connecting one ability, and then you win the fight. It's magnificent, and a lot easier than you might think. So, when you grab someone with Lifesteal Fist, you will do damage equal to your critical damage. It counts as a critical hit, so it's boosted by the Critical Talisman, for example. And you will also heal for 30% of your health over the duration. Of course, you're immune while doing it, because it's like performing a critical animation, and basically the enemy dies because, again, you're doing critical damage. That is glorious. The downside, however, is that Lifesteal Fist can only be used on, well, fist weapons and claws. This means it can only be used on very short-range weaponry. So, the weapon of choice is quite literally the longest weapon that we can use it on, the Raptor Talons. This is convenient because, hey, they have bonus bleed, which is lovely on such fast attacking weapons, and have naturally higher crit damage at times 1.1, but also, they, as claws, give you a power stance with just the one. This lets us do something quite fun in the form of, well, enchanting the weapon. We set Lifesteal Fist, which is located from uh, the Beetle in Kaelid, it's around right here. And by the way, use any claw you prefer. The Raptor Claws are from this cave, but really, any claw or fist is pretty much going to get the job done. It really is kind of a preference, but longest one is your min-max. In any case, you want to set it to a standard affinity, so it can be weapon buffed. And then we want to go the Sorceress route of Scholar's Armament. This is the strongest weapon buff in the game because Sorcery has access to the strongest scaling on its Sorcery scaling. And with Lucette's then for 13, we add nearly like 320 or something magical damage to the weapon. This is a simple plus zero as it currently stands and it still does like 2000 damage. It's really quite ridiculous. And of course, you look badass with the glowing talons like that, and your just general attack damage, even if we ignore the Ash of War, is monstrous doing this. Claws and fists with a strong weapon enchant is one of the highest DPS things you can do in the game. Obviously, the trade-off is low range, but here we have massively powerful magic swipers swiping rapidly as they bleed and give you an opportunity to just grab and win outright. That is awesome. And because in order to do this, we are up at 80 intelligence, these are the stat spreads, very nice and simple, you of course can add on any sorcery you want for that glintstone staff in your left hand to round out the build, give it utility, but of course I'm focused on the claws and the lifesteal fist for the purpose of this video, but it opens you up to a lot of options. So what is the build in its totality? Obviously we've got our lifesteal fist, our raptor talons, Keen tends to give you the best results, but again, if you are high level 
and can pump decks as well as Int and get your deck scaling going on this too, well then you are really going to destroy things and that is very much something for you to check out if you do have a very high level character, but you really don't need anything other than the minimum requirement for the weapon because all of the damage, all of the work comes from the Scholar's Armament. It's much more effective than just not going Int and just going 80 decks and being a lot more one dimensional, you'll also do less damage but also not have access to a source backing cast to give you even more deadliness. Unless your name is Gideon, who apparently all knows how to carry on walking despite literally being grabbed, receiving the damage for it, and being staggered by it, and healing most of the damage it does back at it. Why is it broken on Gideon? In any case, talisman wise then, of course, we want the Shard of Alexander to boost the grab to death levels, which is from the Alexander quest line. We want the Magic Scorpion, because we're putting a hell of a lot of magic damage on these things, and this gives it a 12% boost from the Saluvis questline. Then, of course, we want the Dagger Talisman, which can be found at the end of a windy, wendy path through the Volcano Manor. This gives a 15% boost to critical hits, of which Lifesteal Fist counts as one. The final talisman slot is, again, a personal preference. They do have bleed on them. It's not crazy because we're not focusing on it, but if you want a blood lodge, you can. I like Dragon Crest because obviously it's nice to just not get absolutely smushed if you do get hit, but whatever tastes your personal preference here. In the Wondrous Physic, I like a bit of poise. It makes getting the Lifesteal Fist off easier if you can trade with it. And then obviously the plus 20% magic damage tier. So now we're in a situation where we have buffed up our claws with Scholar's Armament. They're now hitting incredibly hard. So we can't just go slashy slashy and melt things that way, especially with the bleed happening on top of it. That is wonderful. The simple combination of fist weapons or claws with Scholar's Armament and a massive amount of sorcery scaling is just baseline very much powerful if you can work around the range. But in reserve, in backup, we have this lifesteal fist and the crouch that you do when you press it does give you a very good chance to dodge kind of mid and high swipes which can surprise people a lot of time also once you actually start the lunge you do get a good decent amount of iframes and you can trade grab people which is really lovely and one of the big things even if we ignore pvp for a second is that while yes you can't use this against most bosses you can use it against kind of small humanoid bosses like the black knife assassin sadly not millennia I did try, but uh, this makes clearing levels effortless because you can essentially just grab everything that isn't like a giant or an omen, and then at that point you just kill them because you just chain grab them over and over and over again if they've got the health to take it, but most things will just die in one hit, and it heals you, and if you wanted, you could put on the talismans that give you mana and health when you do a crit, which both trigger from this, which means you never actually run out of FP while doing it. So it's like such a safe, potent, and guaranteed way to get through anything on your way to any given boss, which is really good fun. Saves you on mana, saves you on health. I really like it in that respect. But then we do get to PvP, and then we get to the mind games. We get to why it's so much fun. All you have to do is land it. And in an invasion-based situation, that is certainly doable. People get confident. People are in groups of two or three. They rush you and you can really time it, really bait them in and then just grab and kill one of them. And then you watch the others be like, oh, what happened? What? I what? I always like to imagine it's like a group of people talking to each other like on Discord or something. And one of them's like, I just died. I don't what? Because you just, you know, you don't see life still fits. Nobody uses it. Of course nobody uses it because, you know, conventionally everyone thinks it's just really bad. But like most things in Elden Ring, if you really build for it, if you employ the right strategy, it becomes really quite good. But most importantly, it becomes really quite fun. And invading as this glowing magic shredding claw of death that at any moment can just surprise grab and just wipe someone out is purely satisfying. And I would heartily recommend you give it a go and enjoy reaping death upon thine foes. Let me know what you thought, of course, and indeed, like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a god boy.
Uh, Josh, yeah. Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.